That'll work. There you go. What's up, Christopher? Not much. Recording in progress. Here we go. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. What's up, Rebels? This is Andy. And uh, Brian's here and Chris is here. And uh, we're going to have the thing. We're going to have the uh, the round table. And before we do that, we have to read the agreement. So here we go. Agreement number one. I will protect the value of my services. I will never provide free services as these only serve to erode the value of similar services industry-wide. Number two, I will practice incredible transparency. I will explain the claimed process in detail to my client. I will not hide pricing details or manipulate reports. I will not communicate with a third party without also communicating with my client. Uh, number three, I do not believe in competition. Never have. The restoration companies in my market are part of my community. I will be an active member of that community. It is our unbreakable unity that will create the change that we strive for. And number four, I am willing to walk away from any project, client, or contract that is not compatible with my values and stated mission. No relationship is worth losing money, sleep, or my humanity. So before we get into it, um, we're going to talk about cost, real cost. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of things that came up in the group this week. But uh, before I dive into, I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through the, the group feed and see uh, what kind of questions we can answer there. But uh, before we do that, you guys are uh, first in. So what's that? Talk to me. You guys have any burning desires, burning questions? Right now, I just need my Xactimate update to stop crashing. Yeah, I've tried to update it three times today. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but yeah. I have people. I'm gonna have people look into it. Have my people. <laughs> mm. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, Chris, nothing, nothing burning, nothing. No, just getting back into things again. Okay, we on vacation? Yeah, I just got back from Alaskan cruise. Oh, how was it? It was awesome. We had uh, clear skies, sunny, hot every day for the entire cruise until we got back to Vancouver. So, wow, unseasonably warm, I'm sure. Yeah. And of course, because of the fear of going on a cruise, it was only half full. So, like, no waiting and just. You had the whole boat to yourselves. Yep. I like it. Okay, well, uh, I, this this hit me. This uh, I put up this meme yesterday. Comp bids equal bad faith, and uh, it, it came as a result of uh, something I read on LinkedIn, where someone said, "You know, all the all these guys that come in to do comp bids, none of them are in a position to either do the job uh, or or gain the contract, and." none of them will do that job for the price that they're actually giving. So in that way, if it's not a real price, it's, it's them doing a favor for the insurance company, the insurance company using a fake number to try to artificially reduce the severity of a loss and a claim. It's bad faith, bad, in my opinion, every day of the week, every single day of the week, you go out and do a comp bid, I don't care if you charge $8 million for that comp bid. You are not doing anyone a favor except the insurance company. You are not doing any good. Uh, and I think I've, I've come out against pretty heavily against providers of comp bids outside of the appraisal process. You have no business stepping onto somebody else's job site and giving a fake quote for that work that you know you're never going to do. So that's my opinion on comp bids and why it is a bad faith. Let's say you. Yeah, that's, if they're not going to do it, it, it's a straw man case. Um, it, it's all those things you say. It, it falls into the line of uh, some of our infamous TPAs that we have to deal with after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they exercise, oh, we're here for the review process or to verify your work. You're free to come to the jump job site in that capacity, but under my supervision and safety rules. And they don't. They never do. 
And their job, as they declare on their websites, now some of them are getting smart and they're changing their websites, is to reduce the severity and save the carrier costs. Mm-hmm. Some, of them, some of them still state it clearly on their website, but uh, a lot of them are starting to scrub that now. Yeah. Which ultimately, when it gets to that level, that's fraud. Exactly. It's fraud. It's lying. You are lying. You're lying to us. You're lying to everyone involved. Uh, Here's a good question. Can someone explain to me how these companies get nationwide contracts, then sub it to someone else that has a nationwide company that is yet is going to hire local companies as subs? Seems like a crazy process, but why not grow in all states? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's marketing. It's marketing. They got the contract and they are not in every single state. You know, they're not in every single town. Um, so in, in order to, in a lot of ways, it's like a TPA. If, if, they can't, if they can't prove that they have coverage in a specific area, they're going to go find someone who can fly their flag, put their hat on, put their shirt on, and pretend as if they are that contractor. I, I, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies that operate that way. ATI is one of them. You know, they, they will get the job, the lead comes into them, and then they go find a local provider to, to do that work. Um, you know, Brian, have you done any sub work for bigger contractors? Yes. Yeah. And how's that work? Um, depends on the contractor. Sometimes it's uh, a finder's fee. Sometimes it's a portion of the job. Um, okay. It varies. But. I, I've, I do take my time to vet them and have them vet me because if it's a company that isn't going to back me up, then I don't want to work with them, especially since it's going to cost me money because I know that they're going to add their overhead and profit on top of mine. Of course they are. Yeah. And, and whoever's hiring them, the, the, the management company or the carrier understands that. You know, everyone's got to make money in order to make that mm-hmm. happen. Um, I would hope they understand that. Maybe they don't. But uh, my experience in that, just to add, has been the desk adjuster, though. No. Because I'm a paperwork, will come to me and oh. try to fight. Like, no. <laughs> nope. No. You know, you, you sub, in a situation like that, you subcontract uh, for somebody in order for you not to have to hassle with getting yep. paid. Yeah, that's, you need to talk, to, need to, talk to the prime contractor, not me. Yeah, I am not the prime. Uh, Matthew Mitchell, I don't know how long he's been in the group. Uh, it doesn't say here. Eh, maybe, maybe I can find out. Mm, I don't care. He's moving to Chicago. He's 29 years old. He's been doing restoration for nine years. Can work any facet of a company that is required. Eh, I don't know about that, Matt, but okay. I have extensive experience in demolition, moisture mapping, emergency response, personnel leisure, leadership, meeting with adjusters, as well as collections and estimation. Okay. Well, any of y'all in Chicago, uh, hit up Mr. Matt. See, uh, see what he has in store. Uh, yeah, everyone's hiring. Yes, we know this. Okay. Ritcon. What is Ritcon? Training. All right. Training. Blah, blah, blah. Give me a good question. What's that? I believe they're up in the Pacific Northwest with you. Okay. Uh, oh, you, know, you knew this was going to happen eventually. Somebody showed up to the shop today. Mr. Mr. Vogel showed up to the shop and uh, all the gas had been siphoned out of his trucks. Well, at $10 a gallon, that's going to happen. Put your stuff inside or behind a gate or something. All right. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot juiciness here in the feed. Okay, here we go. Well, let's segue right into this. Trying to figure out how to charge for using a Matterport camera. How much to charge? Does anyone else bill for them? Yes. Yes. Everyone does bill for them. Everyone should bill for them. And how much you charge, in my opinion, is based on square footage. Um, We do it by square foot. Uh, but a 
you know, residential loss, 1500 square foot or so. Uh, if we're taking that Matterport, we're turning it into an Xactimate file, we're going to charge 1500 bucks if we, if we perform it. Uh, and that should be a pass through right through, you know, 1500 bucks is not an unreasonable amount, amount of money. Uh, some guys are charging 500 bucks for that. But um, some of these fees you get from Matterport, you're going to have 75 bucks to process it. And you're going to have another $400 to get the true sketch or whatever else out of it. I mean, you're 500 deep into costs already. So if you're only charging 500, you're not making any money. At least, I mean, at least you're covering your costs. Maybe that's what your goal is. Uh, but Xactware actually has, um, let me see if I can pull up Xactimate again. It's a 3D, what's they call it? They actually came out last month. Yeah. It was the last month and a month before. 3D scan fee. 3D scan fee. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yep. I'm just going to open this. Sucker hey, Zach. Up. Stop that. Share this. Okay. So we should be able to see a 3D. There it is. Fee scan 3D. I'm just going to. Put that in there and let's see what it says. Well, it's right item. insurance company price. Look at that. That's a great price for insurance company. Zero dollars. Uh, charge for geospatial scan capture interior or exterior. So that tells me I can charge for hover using this line item. It yep. is up to the parties involved to determine when or if this item is warranted and what the appropriate cost should be. Well, I told you my opinion. 1500 bucks, 500 bucks, depends on how big it is. The smaller ones, maybe 500 bucks works. Um, yeah. Zach so Davidson. Zach Davidson, what are you doing in here? Wait, how'd you sneak in here? Give me a chat. Okay. All right, Zach. Uh, by square foot with a square foot minimum, don't be stupid. Yes, that's, that's my advice to a lot of people. Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. All right, we got a couple of attendees in here. Okay, uh, promote Hannah K. Get in here, and Mr. Davison, get your butt in the room. Oh, there's Joe Sears. Joe Sears has showed up again today. Welcome, Joe Sears. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Zach. What's up, Zachariah? Hey, nice. we're uh. I am getting I got, just getting warmed up, man. My, I've got to figure out why my phone is spelled wrong. Yes, I'm Mr. Sayers. Yes, Mr. Sayers. Are you out phone. looking at broken down barns again? Oh, that's awesome. No, no, just got done at the dentist getting a new some work done. All right, all right. I'm trying to get Hannah in the room here. So, Zach, why don't you give us your 90 second spiel on uh, Matterport scanning and what we should charge for it? I mean, you and I have talked about this a lot, Andy, in depth. The square foot percentage works out the best, but that was kind of my comment was I see people all the time. They wonder why they don't get paid for it. You're going to Matterport one or two rooms. I mean, it needs to be a, a decent sized job or a large kitchen into a living room, into another living space, something that makes sense, something that makes it for documentation purposes, something that you justify with insurance. And that's why I said, just don't be stupid because there's enough bad contractors that want to get paid that's fine if you want to get paid for Matterport, but back it up with something legit. Don't just say, well, because I could. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's the problem with a lot of these questions we see in the group is they, they want to know what they can charge for, and that's the wrong question. You need to charge for the services you provide, uh, and that is not an – you charge for what you want to – what you choose to charge for. You don't, you don't charge – you know, you don't just look at this. You know, you're looking at Xactimate the same way carriers look at Xactimate. You're looking at it like a laundry list or, or a grocery list. It's not a grocery list. It's, a, it's, it's an estimating cost, estimating platform where you put in, if it doesn't exist in Xactimate, you put it in to Xactimate. So even before this pro, pre, what's this called? What's this called? Fee scan 3D. Even scan before 3D. fee scan 3D, we were still making up a line item to put a number to it. So, right. you know, and, and, you know, that being said, 
maybe this will get paid more often because Xactimate actually has a line item for it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think we're still going to have um, the same amount of pushback that, um, that we always have. Um, I've got some news in uh, Metro Houston. Just found out from another rebel that I was talking to, uh, Mitch, in that thread. Uh, up in the northwest side of Houston, IAs are now r- running around with Matterports. So you know they're getting paid for it. Yeah, of course they are. Of course they are. So um, also there's another fee that they added with Matterport, which is fee SKTCH. That's to pay. Um, That's a true sketch. Isn't it? Sketching. True sketch, floor plan, uh, things like that. Yeah. So uh, the fee reason. SK. There it is. SKTCH. All right. I'm going to show and you then, that. Uh, show you that. There's a docu sketch, and I think also iGuide are the other two competitors that are in the field. And then you can also adopt, which I know Zach and uh, Joe have been using, is the uh, the Theta using that stuff too. Mm-hmm. So there's more than one way to skin this cat. Uh, but yeah. it, it's just yeah. Well, the put tool- in and put in an appropriate number. Mm-hmm. You know, here's an example of. One, an item that I've been using forever, uh, DOD NAN. Yes. There's another zero. It's it's a name your price line item. It's zero. Well, fee scan is zero. Fee sketch is zero. So it's up to us to determine what is appropriate. And this one, maybe I have a square footage price for you know uh, maybe i do yes i do where's my fee schedule i'm gonna stop this show. i'm gonna share my whole damn screen share the whole damn thing there we go so fee schedule where's my matterport commercial okay 25 cents a foot all right uh matterport processing hosting self perform 85 bucks uh here's my all-inclusive matterport sketch Residential, 1500 bucks. So um, here's the capture only. So maybe that's an appropriate line item, 775 bucks. I don't know. But these are things you plug in here. So if this is a commercial job and I'm doing it, I'm going in here and saying the floor, which I don't have any, this is a blank estimate, but I'm putting 0.25 in there. And that is my pricing. That will work out. Yeah, I should put it in a real estimate, but that's how you use it. And don't be shy about it. Don't try to hide it somewhere. Don't try to play it off. It is what it is. Your costs are real. They need to be addressed. Speaking of costs, let's jump into this thing. And I'm going to let, um, I'm going to let Mr. Roush give us a little intro on this spreadsheet here. Pull my Talk to me seat. about what we're looking at here, Mr. Roush. So this is an Excel spreadsheet tool that um, I got from Zach Detmore. Of, uh, he's a remodeler in New Jersey. And this is a tool he uses uh, for pay rate tracking to determine his real actual labor costs. And you can see it drills down uh, you put in your hourly pay rate in the upper left-hand corner. You input how many paid holidays you're going to give them, paid sick days they earned, how many hours of work they're going to do, how many days per year. And then it calculates everything out. You can put in your Social Security, your Medicare, everything your particular state has, um, health insurance premiums, 401k, et cetera. So um, as you go to the right, says year, month, week, day, hour for budgeting purposes, you can see what the top line is, but then you go to the bottom of the tool, you know, if they're operating out of vans in this case, you can input the individual van costs. If I'm paying this person 30 bucks an hour and they're actually working for me full time over the course of a year with the inputs I have here, they're not $60,000 a year. They're a hundred and four, just round up $105,000 a year is what they cost me. Mm. That's a lot of money. Let's so, take a uh, twenty dollar an hour tech. See what comes up. Okay, there we go. Is that really thirty three thousand? That's it, man. It just that's just not enough money. 
to live anymore. It's crazy. Well, no, that's based on 208 days. Change it to 250 on days work per year. Okay. Okay. So but also, 40 grand. Too, if you have somebody you hire in the middle of the year for budgeting purposes, you can manipulate the day's work for that year to estimate that person's cost for that year. Okay. You can share that with us? Yeah, Maybe. absolutely. Depends on how nice you ask. I'd like to think around with this. Zach, Zach has given permission. Um, you can find it on his website. He is uh, debtmore101 on Instagram. If you dig through his feed, that's how I found it. And I did email him. I said, is this okay? And he said, yes, it's on his website. I don't remember what it is right now. And I asked him point blank, said, are you worried about your homeowners seeing it or your clients? He's like, no, I don't care. It's part of transparency. They right. want to know what I'm, charging, what I'm charging. There you go. So does this, is there any place where this reverses this into um, a fully loaded hourly rate? Uh, that I, I'm sure you could add the extra lines. So let's just say you created field under total cost. You can say uh, fully loaded. You can put your margin percentage there and then do it multiplier across the fields and that would declare your rate. So you could project how much you can earn from that person. It's just a simple Excel sheet. Yeah. Yeah. So we could do... Uh... So you could put your markup on there. Equals, uh, let's go fully loaded divided by hours work per day times total days. So a $20 an hour employee fully loaded without OMP, this is not OMP, 37.38. So this... If you look at the, yeah, now you're going to do your factor. Uh, and I think we should factor at 1.5. That's 56 bucks an hour, which is, isn't that pretty close to what Xactimate has for water tech, isn't it? It's close. Yep. Yeah. Water tech around here, I think it's running about 52. Yeah. So lo and behold, Xactimate ain't wrong. That's, uh, that's not a bad number, but, um, you still don't have any, well, may, maybe there's an argument to be made there. Don't, 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 uh, don't use this against me, but maybe there's an argument to be made that there is some margin built into that rate. What do you think? I know I just said, I, my mouth feels dirty. I just said that, but. Well, I can tell you on this example, what's missing here is what is the real health insurance premium? That I put that example, that was my cost, mm. what I had. I don't have 401k on there, so that's not loaded in. Mm -hmm. You know, my workman comp rate is lower than others, depending on my NAICS profile. Mm -hmm. so depending mm -hmm. on what you do, there's a lot of other variables that change that. What assumptions are going into that rate with Xactimate? Well, if we're shooting for, if we need... Uh, 35% GP, we need 1.55 markup. Yeah, I don't know. It's okay, close. well, it's a tool. It's, it's a tool that we can use in, you know, back to what Brian, you said before we got on here, you got to know your numbers. You got to know your costs. Uh, and you can't start you can't start figuring out what your markup should be until you know what your costs are. And this is a great example of, of what a guy, a $40,000 a year guy really costs 75. And that's real. That's, uh, that's, that's, there's, but there's no, okay. Well, on mitigation in uh, in mitigation labor, maybe there is uh, there's some there's a little cushion in there, yeah. Anyway, yep. all right. What say you guys? What else you got? There we go. Whew. Hannah Kay is um, sitting in the waiting room. I can't get her to 
become a panelist, but oh well. Hey, I got a question for you because I came in a little bit late on the Matterport stuff real quick. Sure, um, sure. So like, A, if you're doing a true sketch, are you guys, do you guys mark it up or do you just charge it at call since you're literally doing nothing? You're just pushing one little button and that's it. If you do no. the true sketch point. No, I mark it up. I yep. got to make okay. money on it. You're fine. to make money on it. And then how okay so what's the how would you guys go about just like you don't charge you know we don't charge when our you know we, that's our project manager position or whatever usually you know that goes out and sketches the jobs out and measures it so how are you justifiably charged or what i mean if you're doing 25 cents a square foot and you're making three or four hundred dollars on a whole house you know a two level home or whatever how are you, are you lowering? I mean, how do you offset that since you, if you're already doing project management on top of it, and that's what the project managers out there doing is getting the measurements and doing the scope of work and everything. How are you justifying that much additional money simply to run the camera, or to turn the camera on? Because otherwise you'd be taking pictures as well and pulling measurements. So the time is actually less, I think, than you know, the amount of time you're spending. So how do you guys justify that, I guess, the, is what I would say. Rate. Yeah, uh, one second, Brian. The rate we have is is all in. It's it's an all inclusive. That's that's the project management time. That's the labor time and the hard cost from Matterport. Uh, if I'm doing it separate, I'm peeling off the processing uh, fee, the hosting fee, and the sketching fee. That's matter. That's Matterport fees. Those are my costs. I'm going to mark those up, and I can then I could separate the labor, but. Uh, I like the all in, I like the full, just the one number for the whole package. Now, and on, com like on commercial, like it's easy, I feel it's super easy. And I mean, all, we're all justifiable on, on a, like a commercial loss to do Matterport and they don't give you too much crap, but it really seems, at least from what I've been seeing lately, is if you're trying to do Matterport on a residential side, unless it's like a large scale fire, something, you know, set, you know 70, 80,000 plus job, like a lot of the adjusters are like, well, you chose to use it. I didn't ask you to do that there and all. And they don't, they try to get out of trying to pay for it. Cause they say, well, you chose to use, it's like you chose to get an Eagle view or a roof review so you didn't, to make your life easier. I didn't tell you you had to do that. You could have just done it the normal way. What's your, what would your guys' best response be to that there to help justify the fact that, well, this is your, just because you're old school and you don't want to pay for a new school way. It doesn't change the fact that, I'm doing it the right way now. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Loss integrity. Does that make sense? The loss integrity. It's data preservation. Um, it's CYA. And the, the trend in the industry, especially residential, is legal. That's where it's going. <laughs> and if that just becomes your process, whether it's a large loss or a small loss, all right. Let's say it's a small loss. We've had this discussion, Zach, correct me if I'm wrong. You bust out the simple camera, do the small scan just for the preservation, right? But if it's a large loss and that just becomes your SOP, your, your CYA. Exactly. And I mean, I've, used it as a, I've used it as a leveraging point too, where I've actually, you know, put it in an estimate, submitted said estimate to the insurance carrier. And typically where I'll use it is there's a continuous floor going throughout maybe two floors of a house. How many times do we see that they don't, they, they push back, oh, the floor is not continuous or whatever, you know, other excuse they use. You show them the Matterport and you can actually walk it through before you do pre-demo. All of a sudden they go, oh, you're right. It is, it is continuous floor. And I'll say, I'll remove that Matterport fee once you cover the floor. Which one's more important? The 300 bucks or the whole floor? Sure, that, that's, that makes sense to me. Uh, keep in mind, Every insurance policy in the land requires that the insured mitigate, stop further damage, and document their loss. They've chosen to document that loss using the best technology they have. But if they're required to do it as part of the policy, the carrier should pay for it. Just like they're required to mitigate their loss, right? They're required to get a drying company in there to dry it. The insurance company covers that because it's a requirement to, to maintain adherence to the insurance policy in place. So all we're doing is documenting the loss according to the policy. Yeah, it's, it's in, in that every expense that we incur 
excuse me, the insured incurs, and if you know contractor incurs that cost on behalf of the insured, that's the same thing. Every expense is should be covered and paid for under the policy. And I agree. No, don't get me wrong. Like I agree. Like I charge for my Matterports all the time. Like I'm not going to back down. But I've had a few adjusters. They're like, "Well, you guys use Mika as well, and you're not. You go. You guys just going to charge me for the Matterport, but you, do, you know, I'm not going to pay for the Mika." And are like, you know, but the Mika, the, the Mika, that's the carrier requiring the carrier via the you guys is requiring are, to you use know, them. You guys are monitoring and using, you know, computer programs or whatever. There's a lot of companies. There's a lot of companies documenting the moisture readings and such, even, and they're not TPAs. There's a lot of them out there. Well, but that's, that's, that's SOP. That's, that's a standard of care that's been set. And, and now, if we have access to superior technology and we choose not to use it, well, that's, that's, not, that's not adhering to the most current standard of care, in my opinion. I had one adjuster tell me, try to tell me it was, it's like the thermal imaging. Back when thermals were, you know, you're still buying three, five, seven thousand dollar cameras at the time. That's why the thermal imaging item got put into the oh, program. But now that you so can get them for two, three hundred dollars at the same price as meters, they don't want to pay for them. And they say, and they told me, well, if you, you know, the matter porting line item was because you people were having to call it professionals that were doing big reports. Am I cutting out bad? Yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's all right, though. Uh, at the end of the day, this is just the next newest thing that insurance companies are throwing a tissy fit about. And it's the next thing that insurance adjusters are being trained to push back on. And just because an adjuster pushes on something doesn't make it wrong, doesn't make it illegal, doesn't make it improper. It just makes it something they don't want to pay for. And and that goes back to everything we do here. We have to keep pushing. We have to stand our ground. When we stand our ground, we win. But when we acquiesce, we lose over and over and over and over. We don't just lose that one battle. We lose every battle from that point forward. So we give in once, we lose the entire thing. So that's what's, that's what's at stake. Charge for what you need to charge for. You know, go back to Bill Loveland. He said, you've got to have the guts to charge what you need to charge. This is the, the founder of Xactimate. So I'm going to use that quote until I die. We've got to have the guts to charge what we need to charge. That's it. Plain and simple. I don't, I don't care what they want to pay for. And at the end of the day, we're probably going to have to end up suing a lot of companies. And I see, I see lots of all over the place. You guys, you guys see that, uh, that roofer at State Farm? A State Farm guy on a roof <laughs> that was, was yes. all I over it. That, on... that broke the interweb today. I didn't listen to it. I just saw it and I saw, you know, everyone's comments on it. I'm like, oh, this, I don't know. What was that guy saying? I mean, I saw, I saw the roofer like lifting he was up. saying you're like, doing it wrong. It, it, and, the, and the contractor was asking him to tell him how to do it the right way. And he's like, I'm not a professional. I can't tell you how to do it right. I can just tell you you're doing it wrong. Where, where's this at? Where's this at? Level of the playing field, was it? Oh, I, I mean, I, I saw it on Reddit. Now. I saw it on Reddit, and then I saw it on LinkedIn. So it's all over the place. Yeah. And, and that's a case of the adjuster getting out of his lane. Yeah, way, way out of his lane. And, and the homeowner is down there. So you could tell that roofer did a good job of educating his homeowner, saying, hey, I want you to watch this. and in real time recorded on over two videos oh my god that was unbelievable but that's the state of the world today yeah well, that's, that's, that's right. occurred to me here that just happened to me here on, on a project of state farm adjusters and adjusters have been facilitating the repair mike you're fading now mitch what is that mitch? is it mitch no so it's, it's somebody on the phone who is that no, who is that? I can't tell. 
Yeah. You had something to say. <laughs> Mitch, we got to get you a microphone, my friend. I guess. Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh what else did i do uh oh another meme i put out there today it said uh said uh the int- the adjuster and a carrier have no right to set prices yep and i think that bears repeating you know we, they are not in a position contractually or otherwise to tell anyone what they can and cannot charge for something they are only in a position to determine whether what's being charged is appropriate. So every time an adjuster says, well, change your pricing back to the exact mate standard pricing, they cannot, you're not obligated to follow that instruction because there's nothing in the law, in the policy or anywhere else that says they get to tell me what I can and cannot charge. And so that goes back to this 3D scan thing. They can't tell you, you know, if you're afraid to charge something because you think the carrier is going to kick back at you, guess what? They're going to kick back no matter what you charge. They're going to kick anything back to you. doesn't matter the dollar amount. They have to. That's what they're trained to do. Ah, Anyway. Hey, Zach, I've got a... uh, What's up, what's up with that fire? Is that is that going sideways because the 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 Southern Oregon fire? Do we have a learning? Is there is there a learning opportunity there? The group at large. Is that the new one that you submitted today? No, the nine one one. The old one. I think. Oh, maybe Joe was working on that. Sorry. I don't know. I haven't seen that one come across recently. I know you just sent us another fire to write, but. <laughs> I'm waiting yeah, that's on a total, to hopefully upload uh, stuff. <laughs> total loss fire. So yeah, new new client this week. Um, his house burned two years ago in September to the ground. Um, and he's trying to find a way to rebuild his house. And he found me somehow. I don't know how he found me. But uh, and Safeco is $300,000 short of what he needs. And so... He found me and, and we're going to work that. So that's the file I sent over to you uh, yesterday morning or this morning, Zach. This morning. Uh, and, um, and total loss fires two years after the fact, it comes down to just the best, most creative estimate guy wins because there's nothing to look at. There's nothing to prove this loss. Um, we go off of plans and then we go off of market rates. And right now, the market now for labor and material versus 2020 is a much, it's a different world. Yep. So, you know, and he's, you know, my client is realizing this in a hurry that, you know, he thought he was getting, you know, they paid him, I mean, I think they, they wrote him a check for 350 grand. And then he went to the market trying to rebuild his house and he can't do it. Left. Yeah. He can't do it. Uh, so that's that's the type of work we do around here. So Andy, are you doing that in your loss writing capacity or are you doing in your PA capacity? Right We're going to stair step it. We're going to write the law. We're going to write it. We're going to estimate it first and then probably go to appraisal on it. And then probably, I told him he needs to hire me as his PA right now. Um, yep, absolutely. But- not everyone wants to go full boat right out of the gate. You know, you've got to lead them. You got to lead them along. You know, I'm hoping after he speaks with an attorney, the attorney stocks some sense into him because September 13th is coming up. September 13th is going to be here before we know it. I mean, it's already mid June at this point. Um, and so once that 24 months is up, he's going to be SOL. Yeah. You're out of timeline. Well, because that attorney's, you know, Safeco doesn't have to accept a tolling agreement, you know, just because it comes from an attorney. Uh, they may or may not. I don't think they will. I think they're going to try to push this thing until that deadline is is passed. Um, so, whew. ouch, jeez, yeah. But three hundred and yeah. So, 
Yeah, Zach, you're gonna have to write 750 grand on this thing. No, no biggie. We with code compliance that you have to do and everything. I don't know the size of the house. It sounds like it's a higher end house, but Pacific Northwest. Yeah, I could see it hitting that easily. What what's the cost per square foot for new construction up there right now with uh, code compliance? Oh, it's every bit of three fifty. Yeah, man, that hurts. Yeah, and Ooh, that's that what we nice might house. we might end up we might negotiate that way. We might just try to say, hey, this is this is what the square footage is, and go this the, is what the market rate is. Yeah, and, go to the Marshall parameters. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. This Zach's is an work authentic like, log cabin on a lakefront. Oh, mm -hmm. so it was really nice. Yeah, its last <laughs> estimate before it burned down was $871,000. So. That's not a and lake. That, it's on a, that was it's a river. A river. Sorry, there's a body of water. All I can see is there's a body. Yeah, it's, it's, on, it's on the McKinsey River. Yeah. Nice. So the Zillow was over eight hundred. Which Zillow, as they state, is behind and inaccurate. <laughs> well, Zillow also uh, there's the land, you know, the the property itself is in that. So seven fifty is probably not an unrealistic number. The lot's yeah. probably not that big. It was okay. just a two bed, two bath, nineteen hundred square feet. But I mean, it was nice. I mean, his deck wrapped around the whole house. Big glass <laughs> windows facing the river. Oh, that deck's got to be expensive. Full roof. Yeah. Well, oh, the whole house is wood. Interior, exterior. Mm. Mm. Was it log? Yep. Uh, can you can you show us without showing the name? Oh, there's no name on Zillow. Yeah, show us. It'll have the address. Yeah, well, put a window over it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, uh, we'll wait All right, for that. we don't need to see it. I'm, I'm not that curious. I'll, I'll look I, at it later. I was going deep into the things, and Tim Fuller is posting about a carrier doing title work prior to issuing a MIT payment. What do you know about that? Whoa. What? To, to, you mean to make sure who owns it? Uh, so I'll read right here. Uh, anyone ever heard of a carrier doing title work prior to issuing a MIT payment? I'm assuming, don't know for sure. They're checking to see if there's a mortgage company involved. There isn't one and isn't one listed on the policy. Shouldn't their duty in there? If there isn't one listed, do they really pull title work to check? They insist that they have to get totaled work back before they can issue payment. I've never heard of this one before, ever. Seems crazy to me. Anyone? No, that's a, that's a new one. That's just a new bullshit tactic. Um, you know, mitigation checks don't have, mitigation is cost incurred. It, it, they don't have mortgage company on it anyway. Yeah. Not supposed to. Not supposed They'll to. Do Not supposed to. No. You know, that's, that's, that's cost incurred per the policy to, to prevent further damage from happening. Um, and that's just, that's just the policyholder adhering to the policy. No, I've never heard of that. Oh, uh, there's a new company that handles mortgage company payouts. Have you guys heard of Surety? No. It's Mark Mark Watley's baby. I guess oh, it nice. just came out of just came out of beta. So maybe we'll talk about it next week. Well, I'll see if Mark wants to talk about it next week. Um, it looks like <laughs> from the looks of it, it yeah. looks like they handle the they handle the draft checks and the disbursements from the mortgage companies. So they're at like uh, insuranceclaimcheck.com. Yeah, except for they're using they're using Matterport um, to justify work done to get those checks written, uh, progress payments. Oh, so it's it's supporting us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I you know one thing I didn't look at is what the fee is. I have no idea. It's got to be a but fee. That, does that become an, an incurred cost then if you're utilizing mark services in that capacity? I bet it does. I, I would argue it does. I would argue that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so I guess that's like progress scans on a construction job. Can you hear me now or am I still breaking up? I can hear you now. 
I was going to tell you, I wanted to talk to you guys about this cluster of a job that I had come in this week and get your guys' thoughts on it, if that's okay. All right, you've got 12 minutes. Homeowner filed a claim um, with a large-scale uh, insurance company on in March. They told her to call out a local vendor out here, preferred vendor. They said they came out and said, "Hey, we're a little bit backed up. We'll get we'll get you on the list." They dropped two dehues at her house. Uh, how? It's not a big house. It's only maybe a fifteen hundred square foot ranch. Uh, clean supply line break. Um, they dropped two dehues and said, "We're going to have to pack this out." They let it sit for a week. They started packing it out. They had to stop because the company had to go up to some large scale pack out up north. And so all together, before mitigation even began, they it was like five weeks before mitigation work even began. And they ended up flood cutting this entire homeowner's house out. Four feet, not two feet, four feet out. Mm. They um, threw away so they threw away most of her stuff like of that like they threw away the countertops and the sinks and the faucets her fridge who and are these people here's the rub of it so she, it's a it's an actually larger scale um operation here in indianapolis that like usually doesn't do stupid stuff like this okay but they um the mitigation, okay, so check this out. The, the pack out estimate was $40,000 for the pack out storage and cleaning. The textiles was $20,000, which only left her 40 grand to replace all the stuff they threw away. Oh no. The dry out, the dry out bill was $5,100. Okay. And, and then she, and she was like, well, I want to have a mold remission done. And the adjuster said, well, you only have $2,000. And that, you know, the testing and the IEP fee will come out of that there. So that's going to take 450 away. I got involved um, in all on the job to do a reconstruction estimate on it. Pulled it up. They had done $5,000 of, of the water mitigation and then charged 13,000 to her mold policy. She had a $15,000 of the policy, leaving her two grand. The IEP came back saying the house was still not properly or remediated. And this company who had it was a TPA. They had they didn't want to do the repairs, but they gave a courtesy reconstruction estimate. Their reconstruction estimate came out to seventeen thousand dollars in repairs. How many thousand? And me and then, then another person I seventeen. Uh, you're killing me, Mr. Sowers, Mr. Sears. What, what was I know, I'm used to you a do against the GL policy to me? Yeah, you're you're muted or something. You put the phone okay, in. Okay, can you hear me? Is this there you better go. now? There you go. Okay, five thousand dollar water loss. They told her that she had two thousand dollars in mold coverage. The mold IP would come out of that, so minus four fifty, leaving her sixteen fifty. I get involved to do a reconstruction estimate. I asked the adjuster to send me over a copy of the estimate that was already you know put together because I'm already four months or no, four months behind. The the courtesy estimate this TPA did was for seventeen thousand dollars on her house. The What's entire your... house, uh, sixty-two thousand dollars. Mm. Yeah, it was four foot flood cuts throughout the whole house. Three bedrooms. Yep, two or one and a half baths. Seventeen grand will fix that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Comparative well, bid. Then, what? Well, and that's what's funny is she had she got uh, another company come out and they gave her roughly about fifty thousand dollars on a bid, mm -hmm. and the adjuster like does not want. He's like, our people said it's seventeen thousand dollars. I guess you need to go with the preferred vendor then because I'm not paying this. Yeah, they do. And I was like, they, they should hire. That you should tell that you should tell the insured to hire the preferred vendor on a not to exceed contract of seventeen thousand dollars. That's and when they refuse, she goes to the adjuster and says, your preferred vendor refused my job. Now what? Yeah, you, you got to put it back on them. It's on the it's on the insured. Well, and the problem is I'm trying my best to do that, but she does not want these people back in her house because like when they're in the pack out, like they were putting stuff on the ground, you know, moving stuff out of the rooms and putting it on the ground and then it was getting wet. And then they were like, oh, well, this got wet, so this is non-restorable. And they threw away 
like solid wood furniture because they're like, oh, there's mold growth on there. It's not worth cleaning. And are you? Kidding? I mean, they threw away her. They threw away her refrigerator because it accidentally got unplugged. And they're like, well, it's it's just there's mold all over and stuff. Now we're going to throw the fridge away, away as well. Like, she needs, she she needs to sue them. She needs sue. to sue them. Yeah. She should sue and, them. And then her well, insurance company. Like I said, what pissed me off the most was that this adjuster told her she had $2,000 in mold coverage. I get into her file online, everything, and look at everything. The water crew charged her five grand in water mitigation and $13,000 for mold remediation on a category one that had no present you know, mold beforehand. And no uh, one wanted to tell her that they've already, that she had a $15,000 policy and that they spent all of it. She needs to like these, Yeah. Yeah, this is I, this is not something that you are qualified or licensed to handle. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And <laughs> like, I just walked in there and I was like, because like I walked in and I was like, "Where's your dishwasher? Oh, they threw it away. Where's your sink at? Oh, they threw it away." I was like, "Why would you throw the sink away?" God. Like, I was like, "Jesus Christ!" Wow. And this uh, is this is the TPA vendor. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, it's just amazing. Like it blew my mind. Like she's, I mean, it's a small house. She's got a $250,000 policy with a hundred thousand dollar contents policy on there. And they took $64,000 of it to throw her shit away, clean what they were going to keep, store it for her. And literally she does like, nope. They kept the mattresses, but threw away the bed frames. Like it's just, it's the biggest joke I've ever seen. Yeah, she needs like, to go. She needs to go against um, their bond, and she needs to sue them directly to go against their liability insurance. Period. <clears throat> Indianapolis will have plenty of attorneys that will take that one on. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh yeah. And I well, I don't know. It's certifications for those guys file formal complaints for unprofessional behavior whatever with IIC or C whatever organizations they but, but once again of. this is this is not Joe's problem no no that's the homeowner it's, it's, it's not Joe's company's problem nope um you know if, if I'm managing Joe's company right now I'm telling him to walk <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that I want I got better things to do with my time than try to help someone convince someone they need to go find a lawyer but right. you know, oh, yeah. there's there's nothing i mean you guys so you're going to throw good money after bad trying to make this right when you should just go mm, we're done call me when you got the rest figured out because i can't do it for you yeah that's my opinion no. oh yeah i mean my company i already told my company we don't want it want it and everything but uh, my bleeding heart, soft heartedness keeps telling me that I need to help her at least kind of direct her. But I'm like, at this point, I was like, you need to just go talk to, I was like, don't even do a PA. Just go straight to the lawyer at this point. Cause that's a fucking joke. Yeah. I mean, a PA is, is, you know, a PA can't sue the contractor. And, nope. you know, and, in the attorney, yeah, this is, this is way beyond PA. And what's messed up about it is literally they told her, Oh, we're sorry it took so long. We had 28 clients ahead of you because you came in at a surge time here in Indy. And I was like, she's like, if they had told me, they, they, did, they told her that like after the job was done. And she's like, I didn't know who else to call. Like that's who my insurance company told me to, I should call in Indianapolis. I didn't know I could even call anybody else. Google. You know, and people wonder why we don't like TPAs. You know, I still get, I still get the the gremlins on my my LinkedIn feed, you know, the the diehard general grand adjusters saying, you know, you're just you just talk shit, you don't want yeah. The reality is they operate a business that is bad for the consuming public. And TPAs are the worst thing that's ever happened to our industry ever. Oh. And yeah, I get you, Joe. I mean, I've, I had the same thing. I've got a soft spot. I want to help people. But there's a point where the more you help, the more you're going to hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that's what sucks is like, I mean, 
I walked in there. I'm like, I wish I could help you, but like, I can't, I'm not even going to touch this. Like, mm-hmm. and I mean, I feel bad because she's like 89 years old. Like she's a little <sighs> old and, and it's just, it's just a bad juju all around. That, that insurance company needs to be sued. That contractor needs to be sued. Yeah. Period. So on that note, we're out. We're done for this week. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna try to do a little editing and just hit upload to YouTube uh, in the next few minutes to get this up today. But uh, good to see you guys. Good to have you guys on. We'll see Sorry you next about week, you. and uh, right, we'll see you me. in the. Uh, we'll see you in the chats, huh? Any last any last words? Any last words of advice or crying? No, it's uh, just keep digging into those numbers. The more I'm learning, it, it, the crash course I'm operating oh god who knew there was so much involved i'm zach knew you knew but uh, hmm. that that that's real important and then um yeah we we just we just got to get better at it and the, the better we are we, we can stand up for ourselves we, we got the technical side down it's it's properly charging it properly paid yeah I mean, we know how to do our job uh the hard part is running the business and getting paid to do our job that's the hardest part. Yep. Man. Oh. Yep. All right, gentlemen. Right, boys. We'll see you guys. Have a great day. Be good.